Hello, everyone. Welcome back. A familiar face. We've got <laughs> <laughs> Sam Rabinowitz, uh, CEO of Lantana LED, back with us in the hot seat today. Thank you for joining us again, Sam. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I rolled right into it. I didn't even say my intro. We are. I'm Candace Sipos with JSA, <laughs> and we're talking about the latest stories, trends, and innovations in the digital infrastructure industry. And Lantana LED is an interesting uh, component of all of this because we're talking lighting and we don't get to do that with anybody else today here at, J at JSA TV. So Excellent. you, uh, by definition, are a differentiator. You're in your own category <laughs> today. So let's jump right in. So n first question, what is the biggest mistake that data, data center operators are making right now when it comes to their lighting strategy? Oh, yeah. So by far, what we see as the biggest mistake these days is just with the sheer amount of pressure and speed that is required to keep abreast and to keep relevant in this industry, there are a lot of times that engineers, through force of, of schedules, just copy and paste specs from data centers that are, say, 20, 30 years ago. All right, you know, so they're pulling old fixtures or they're not really paying attention to those specs. And we're seeing a lot of legacy, you know, specifications that really have more to do with, say, fluorescent lighting as opposed to LED lighting. So that's one of the big, you know, pressure points that we're seeing. It's one of the big mistakes that we're seeing when in, when it comes to the specifications themselves. On the operations side and on the ownership side, what we're generally seeing these days is that because of this onslaught, this, this incredible pressure that we talked about, uh, it's really creating a, a situation where first cost is being talked about more than actual total cost of ownership. So what we like to do with our customers and with our prospective customers is we like to take a look at the spec that they may have gotten at some point that may have been written for a data center that was built 35 years ago and say, here is how we're going to save you on energy costs over total cost of, you know, total life cycle of this uh, data center facility. And then here is how, yes, there may be a marginal increase on the upfront cost here, but you're going to save that in all of the various different ways across the total use of this data center. You're going to save it where you're not going to have to go in and replace light fixtures that fail because they're cheap. Yeah. You're going to save it in that these light fixtures are usually on average 10 to 15 to 20 percent more energy efficient than what you've originally specified in as just an off-the-shelf product that really wasn't actually designed for data center environments either. They were designed for you know things like offices or uh, other things like industrial facilities and don't have that same unique operating requirement that data centers have. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, so classic case of don't do the thing you've always done just because you've always done it, right? right. Rethink the strategy, see what's right. out there on the market today because it's quite different. Correct. Don't yeah. copy and paste. Yes. Love that. <laughs> Love that. Sometimes copy and paste is great. Not in this case. Yeah. Um, okay. So we, where would we be doing if we don't talk about AI? We have to talk about AI. So yeah. how is the AI boom influencing lighting strategies and requirements for today's data centers? Yeah. So... I mentioned earlier the pressure that this market is feeling. You know, mm -hmm. obviously, prior to the AI boom, it was the cloud boom. You know, prior to that, it was the you know internet 2.0 boom. You know, each of these booms are increasing that level of just sheer pressure to get these facilities up and you know running to convert that construction time into actual revenue generation themselves in the facilities. So what we're seeing a lot uh, with our hyperscaler customers, with our wholesaler and co-location customers who are catering to these hyperscalers, uh, is a real focus on prefabrication. Mm -hmm. And and prefabricated hacks obviously have been around for a while, but now they're coming back in force because really it's the only effective way of achieving the scale and the speed in the time frame that we have. But what's new about this AI boom is that, and, and this is a huge step forward in my view, uh, what's new about this is that now prefabricated hacks are incorporated in all of the elements they possibly can into these prefabrication units. So that's busway, that's cable trays, that's piping for liquid cooling, and importantly to us, that's also lighting. Yeah. 
And so we've designed a series of products that are specifically geared towards this prefabrication push that make it easier for the prefabricators themselves to install in the factory, that make it easy for the installers in the field to basically plug and play and just daisy chain and connect in without, you know, costly labor, you know, journeyman master electricians, without, you know, costly supplies such as extra piping for, you know, line voltage, all of that, we make it a lot easier with our products that are now geared towards that prefabricated hack. Amazing. Well, well said as always. Um, so last question. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is a good one. Single most exciting innovation you're working on. Uh, that's a big question, I feel like, that that you can talk about. Oh. I understand there may be some yeah. that you can't. Yeah. Um, part, I, I would say there, I'm, I'm going to take us to two innovations, oh, if I may. And, yeah. and I know, I know. Two I'm, for one. I, this is a twofer. <laughs> yeah. This is a twofer. One of the ways that we're responding to this extreme boom is through scaling our own uh, manufacturing capacity. Uh, we've, ex we've expanded our existing manufacturing capacity. And what we're doing right now as well, which is very exciting and, and is in the initial stages right now, is we're actually in design right now for a 70% automated factory which is robotics driven, uh, which is automated assembly with as light human touch as possible, as well as for, uh, you know, fully vertically integrated as well. Amazing. So that's really exciting for us when we think about that. We're still in the early stages of this design, but that's a huge innovation. And we're looking at some patents around that as well. Uh, and then in addition, uh, some of the other items that we're excited about in terms of product innovation, uh, we're increasing, investing in increasing the energy efficiency yet again to remain at the forefront of uh, the market. And then in addition to that, we're also designing these new products and have come out with these new products specifically geared towards the, the need now, which is the prefabricated hacks and looking around that curve at the next of these uh, innovation points, uh, and we have some pretty exciting products that we can talk about at the next of these shows Ooh, as well. Yes, <laughs> well, you know, we're in a rotation. We'll have you on again. I love it here soon. And I we'll love it. We'll we'll get an update, but yeah, automation that's incredible. Yes, and I and I will say one of the most exciting innovations. A third, apologies, <laughs> uh, and and you guys were you guys had him on uh, at I believe Yada uh, yes. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of our great innovations is that we have a new team member who is our director of strategic uh, partnerships, a wonderful guy named Chris Cooper. Uh, and we are lucky that he has joined the team and are very excited uh, by that innovation as oh, well. Oh, <laughs> I love that. that wait, wait, that's a great note to end on yes. too. So I feel yeah. like what a pro you are that you <laughs> brought us to that moment. So everybody go check out that interview from Yada uh, and uh, you can find it on JSA's, uh, JSA TV's YouTube channel. Uh, and thank you so much, Sam, for joining us again for another great chat. And I'm sure I will see you around over the next couple of Indeed. days. Indeed. Here at DCD Virginia. And if you are here and you're seeing this live, check out Sam, check out, go to LinkedIn. I'm sure you can connect here. Uh, live in person. Yep. Um, all right. Well, thank you to all of our viewers as well for hanging out with us at DCD Virginia and uh, happy networking, everyone. We'll see you soon.